Good afternoon, everybody. It's, uh, oh, yep, there we go. Just making sure everything's on. Good afternoon. Today is December 9th, 2020, and uh, it's going to be a good show about aggression, body language, aggression, body language, well, aggressive body language. How's that? Um, we're going to be going into detail about aggression here today. Um, safety reasons, liability reasons, and in some cases, documentation reasons. So we need to know aggressive body language for that matter. Very important. Huge liability risk. And this last week that I've uh, been doing one-on-ones, I tell you, they've been pretty heavy with aggression. Um, probably, I'd say over 80% of my one-on-ones has to do with aggression. A lot of the times, these dogs are already trained when they come to me. They're trained mechanically, not functionally, mechanically. Hector, my dog does everything, sit, stay, down, come, and heal. And then you look at the body language, and it's different. So we're going to talk about that next week on deactivating an aggressive dog. That's next week, deactivating an aggressive dog. This week is going to be, I mean, today is going to be about aggressive body language. All right, aggressive body language. But again, welcome to the Canine Man Show. I'm Hector Hernandez, and I tell you what, I love doing these shows. They're starting to really feed into my soul. So I really like it. Chris Schultz, I seen that you were here. I'm glad you made it back. And I seen uh, Janice, I seen Janice here, so thank you for being here. Tori, thank you for coming back, I appreciate that. It's going to be a fun hour, you guys, a fun hour. Rachel Klein, Jesse Helm, Holman, thank you very much. Terry Chapman, you got to get in here, Terry. I think I'm going to see you next Thursday, too, remember that. Charlie Williams, thanks for being here. Echo, thank you. Kathy Ford, thank you. Katie and Josh, thank you for being here. Jody, thank you. I seen the picture of your golden. Beautiful dog. And it's not heavy. It looks good. It looks fit, Jody. Just, just, just to let you know. Otho, thank you for being here, Otho. Otho and I had one hell of a one-on-one -on -one with the long hair Weimaraner. I didn't even know they existed, to be honest with you. Um, very, very smart, highly intelligent dog that even had both of us stomp for a quick second, and then we we charged ourselves, and then we got that dog trained. And I'm glad you had to keep it. I'm glad you got to keep it. Katie, thanks for watching. Uh, Laura, thank you for watching. I hope that dog's doing real good. Uh, D, thank you for coming back. D, D Murphy, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you here, D. Uh, what a great, great friend that I have of D. I don't have many good friends. D's one of them. I tell you that. Uh, Brandy Johnson, thank you for being here. So, again, aggressive body language today. Um, remember, we're going to be talking about deactivating an aggressive dog next week with some good videos. Deactivating an aggressive dog next week. But just give you a little bit of sidebar about, about uh, training an aggressive dog. The Palvolve system, the opera conditioning, the treat method, never, never address breed and or temperament. Never address that. They just saw the response that the dog would give for a treat. They did not address temperament or disposition for that matter. So it's very, very important that we go outside of that and start building this narrative of how to train a de how to deactivate a dog the right way for liability reasons. Now, really quick, we're going to be talking about aggressive body language today. Two times this week already, already when dealing with aggressive dogs, I've had to tell owners. If you allow aggressive behavior and this dog is going to hurt one of your family members, if you allow this dog in your house that may hurt you, your wife, or your kids, that is equivalent to domestic violence. Very, very important. That is equivalent to domestic violence. You wouldn't allow me to come to your house knowing that I may hurt your wife or your kids. You would not allow me to come in your house. Don't rationalize it. It's okay with a dog. Be very, very cautious about that. I've had to tell two people that. Both of them understood when I made the parallel, and they weren't getting it initially. Both of them understood. Very, very well received when I said that. But just think about it, you guys. Aggression is, aggression is merited. There's some dogs who are predisposed to be aggressive. I mean, they're bred that way. Hell, we bred them that way, didn't we? We molded them that way. 
We gave him Pacific jobs to be aggressive. We gave him Pacific jobs to be territorial. We gave him Pacific jobs to be protective. We gave him Pacific jobs to make sure that we're not going to get hurt. So it's very important to understand that. The treat method does not work. It does not work. If a lot of the time they give you the misperception that it does, but the dog wasn't truly aggressive then. Then the dog wasn't truly aggressive. He might have had a personal space. It made it build time. It maybe needed some, some time to get acclimated to the dogs or the people around him, but not truly aggressive. You're going to see some truly aggressive dogs next week when I deactivate them. So very important. We bred them that way. We made them that way. Remember that. Hundreds of years of breeding each dog to get what we want. All right, very important. Let me see who else I got here. Uh, Lori, thank you for watching. Lori and I are going to be doing something. And Randy, Lori, I, and Randy are going to be doing a show for you guys. It's going to be outstanding. That's going to be in two weeks. I thought it was going to be next week, Lori. I'm sorry. But when I started doing this show, Lori, it was just way too much to unpack in one show. But that gives us much time, Lori. Gives us a little bit more time. Uh, Gay, thank you for watching. Awesome golden retrievers, Gay. Awesome golden retrievers. So thank you for watching. Uh, Leslie Warden, thank you. Uh, Teresa Lynn, thank you. Rochelle, you're back. All right. I got to get a hold of your sister still about, about a few things. So just, just to let you know. Uh, Sanja, thank you for watching. Appreciate that. So aggression, body language. Remember, dogs also are not moral creatures. Remember, we made them this way, and they're not moral creatures. In fact, in the animal world, we have to have predators for dogs, don't we? There has to be predators. It, what? it balances out nature, doesn't it, with predators? It takes out the young, the weak, the injured, the old, very, and the sick. So those are the dogs, those are the, those are the animals that these predators will go after. So it's very important to understand that these dogs have no moral compass. Who teaches them morals then? Who teaches them right or wrong? I'll take a step further. How do you teach right or wrong with positive motivation? How do you do that? You can't. So what I'm, what I'm alluding to is that you have to teach them right or wrong. Now, one of the things that I've learned is to not do it with your hands because your hands now become weapons. Your hands now become things that the dogs don't like. In fact, when we talk about fear, a lot of the times when us men use heavy-handed methods on these dogs, that means that the dogs start not liking people, which in return starts being aggressive towards just men sometimes. They know women are going to coddle and love them, but they know men are going to be very heavy-handed. That's in some cases. In some cases, the dog's just aggressive towards anybody. It doesn't matter. So this is why it's important not to use hands. We're going to talk about that next week. But as far as body language goes and as far as maintaining a moral compass in these dogs, can't do it with your hands. I'll review that next week, but I want to make sure that you know that. Aggressive body language, again, it is merited on some of these dogs. It is merited. They're supposed to be aggressive. A German Shepherd is supposed to be aggressive. A Rottweiler is supposed to be aggressive. Now, do we get some that are outside of that scope? Of course we do. Of course we do. But nevertheless, in a base for the breed, you want them to be aggressive. Now, AKC, UKC, doesn't test for that, do they? They don't test for that. They don't test for the dog's true temperament. They look at the confirmation. They look at the looks. This is why it's important to understand that these dogs are supposed to be aggressive. When I, when, um, and I'm going to give you a little liability here behind that, you guys. Second thing, not all dogs want to be alpha. Understand that. you got a meek, sensitive dog and even a fearful dog. They don't want to be alpha. They can care less if they're alpha or not. Strong-willed, dominant, dominant-aggressive dogs, they want to be alpha. They want to be alpha. A companion dog, they want to please you. They want to please you. They don't want to be alpha. You got lo low temperament. You have a meek dog, sensitive dog. You have your a fearful dog, and you have your companion dog. They're not interested in being alpha. Strong-willed dog, dominant dog, dominant aggressive dog, they're interested in being alpha. That's why you got to train them differently. You got to train them differently. You have to know your temperaments to determine what you're going to need to do. It's very important, all right? Even a mindset of understanding that. Now, some legal information. Let me see if I got, you guys got any questions here. Uh, Tanya, thank you for watching. Shane McBride, thank you. You don't. Uh, let's see. What does that mean, uh, Shane? You don't. 
Uh, Shane, get, get me a question. You got some good dobes, uh, uh, Shane. Now, Shane, your dobes are supposed to be aggressive, aren't they? They're supposed to handle stress with aggressive, uh, with aggression. It's mandatory. Uh, Bill, William, thank you for watching. So, very, Cindy, thank you for watching. So, very important to understand that, you guys, that some dogs are merited. Now, in this pandemic timing right now, let's talk about some legal issues that I want you guys to be aware of. If you have a dog with a propensity to become aggressive, I took my dog to the vet last week. Not, not my dog, a dog that I have that I'm working with. I took it there. Now, right now, they don't allow me to go inside the vet. They don't allow me to go in there with them, so they take the dog from me. Their question was, to me, is your dog aggressive? My response is, I don't know. He's going to be unpredictable because I'm not there. Make sure that you, and if they has a bite history, make sure you disclose that information to the vet. Make sure you disclose that vet information to the vet, to the groomer, to the doggy daycare, and or to the trainer. Now it's also my obligation, my duty to ask those questions. But a lot of trainers may not ask. They may not even think about it. You still should ask those questions with a dog that you think has a propensity to bite. Ask the question, if, has your dog bitten anybody? Is he aggressive? Now, in this pandemic age, like I said, once you take my dog from me, now you become the agent of the dog. Veterinarians, groomers, trainers, you become the agent. That is your dog now. So that means you can't sue yourself. So be very cautious about this. I deflected it because I don't know what my dog is going to do when I'm not there. I have no idea what the hell they're going to do when I'm not there. So I'm going to tell him he's unpredictable. I don't know. Unless I'm there, I'm going to, I'm going to understand that this dog is reliable and under control and managed when I'm there. But when I'm not there, I don't know. Very important because I don't know what they're going to do. I, I was in a case last year with, with that happening where a groomer took a shepherd and, and, the shep and the groomer was cutting his nails and the dog bit that groomer pretty hard. But the owner had told the groomer beforehand, don't cut his nails. She did it anyways. It's very important to understand that some of these dogs come with a history. Find out a little bit about them if it's going to be a liability. So there's people who, who, who are not liable if they have the dog. And those people are, are the people who are educated to know more than the average person. Trainer, veterinarian, groomer doggy daycare it's very important for us to know what aggressive body language looks like so we don't set ourselves up to fail for di for liability for injury injury being priority and then we can start documenting if you see the change in the dog behavior we can start documenting this okay we can start documenting all right let's see who i got coming here marcy pickles says hi you tell pickles i said hi too marcy oh that pickles uh christine thank you for watching uh let's see who i got here uh, Courtney, thank you for watching. Same with you, Daniela. Danielle, thank you. I appreciate it, you guys. So, understand aggressive body language. Now, when you're looking at protection, see if I got a video here. Protection. The dog wants to protect you. He doesn't want nobody to come near you. Look at the aggressive body language that this dog has. Then we're going to talk about what it looks like. Then we're going to talk about what it looks like. We're going to talk about that more in detail next week. But some of these dogs, they're supposed to be protective of their owner. They don't want nobody to come near them. Now, I used a hat to make sure I didn't get bit, and I tested this dog. I pressured him, got close. You're not going to see the real dog unless he's loose. I know it can be a dangerous, but you have to be ready as a trainer. And if you're afraid of dogs and, and you're a trainer, then, you know, keep training, but if it's an aggression, then give it to somebody else who knows about dogs, aggressive dogs. Don't try to take the risk and get injured. If you don't know, you don't know. This Rottweiler was clearly over 90 pounds. Could have caused some serious damage. 
But as I got closer, he went after me. We're going to talk about the body language that he's exhibiting. And we're going to talk about why he's doing that. But easy. Easy why? He's programmed to do that. His brain tells him to do that. All right? So very important. Uh, let's see here. Michelle's got a question. Dougie, Mike, thank you for watching. Oh, Dougie, I appreciate that. Kim Cotter, uh, thank you. Steve Payne, thank you for coming back. And then I got Kim Cotter, too. Thank you. Uh, let's see here, Rochelle. My vet is pretty awesome and comes right out to the parking lot to do examinations. Yes, yes. Uh, I, Rochelle, that's great. You might even want to mention your, vet's, uh, your vet on here in case I get somebody from that area. The vet that I went to didn't do that. They wanted to take the dog inside. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what he's going to do because I don't know what you're going to do in there. So it's very important to make sure you know that. Frank is no longer doing anything like that. Good, Daniela. That's what we wanted. But again, once they take the dog, Danielle, we don't know what they're going to do because we don't know what's going to happen without you there. Even a, a loyal dog is even more unpredictable. But just we don't know. We don't know. Uh, Sherry Martinez, thank you for watching. Uh, let's see who I got. Renee Peters, thank you for coming back. Uh, so my vet does too. House calls, I'm an eagle. But that's very good. Uh, Danielle, I wish we had more vets like that, but it, it's, it's not that easy. That's protection. Protection. Now, let's think about this really quick. Let's make a parallel here. Aggression and protection. Think about this. That's love, isn't it? That's love. Who does the same thing? We, we do. We love with protection. I'll make sure nothing happens to my kids. I'm going to protect my kids. I'm going to protect my property. I'm going to protect myself. Who else does that? Our dogs. Our dogs do it too. They protect our property, they protect themselves, and they protect the people they love. Think about that. Now, that's how we need to think. Now, let's think like a dog. Next week is how to deactivate them. That's how we're going to think like a dog. So, damn it, quit using your hands to try to get dominance. That doesn't work. All right? So, we're going to talk about that. Very, very important. So, let's go into aggressive body language. Aggressive body language. Aggressive. Well, let's go into this one. Mike is on. There we go. I just got a phone call. I had to decline it. Anyway, so pay attention, you guys. Very important. This dog that you just saw, he protected himself, he's protecting his property, and he's protecting his loved one. He's doing all three. We do the same thing, except they do it with their teeth. We have to make sure that we have control over them. We have to make sure that we manage them so we don't set them up to fail. A lot of the times, we could get in a lot of trouble by not managing the dog because the dog's just doing his job. The dog's just doing his job. So it's important to manage a dog who has a propensity to become territorial, who becomes protective, and who wants to protect his property, himself and you. All right? Think about that. Aggressive body language is what we're going to be talking about here. This is a... This is aggressive body language. Body stiff, handle stress with aggression, direct eye contact, that becomes tunnel vision. Now, look, listen to this. The tail could be wagging because it's happy to bite you. The tail could be wagging because it's happy to bite you. Think about that. And then I'm going to show you a video on explosive aggression here. Uh, explosive aggression and sometimes... When you have a dog who's fearful, that can happen after he build up, after they come up. But I'm going to talk about that. Body stiff, handle stress with aggression. That means if you charge this dog, this dog's going to perform better. He's going to perform better under stress. This is why you want to get the heck out of there when you see an aggressive dog, not challenge it. The only person who has a duty, has a duty to continue on and a, and a duty to follow through would be police, no matter what. They have to override that aggression with the dog. Tail, direct eye contact that becomes tunnel vision. Tail could be wagging. 
because it's happy to bite you. That's aggressive body language. All right, any questions here? Let me go through any questions because I want, I want to go back and forth. We got time to go back and forth. Uh, Darcy, thank you for watching. Tara, thank you. Let's see, part of the reason Murdoch wouldn't let them take him, he sat in his butt and just wouldn't move. Right, that's what happens sometimes. They just sit there. They shut down. They shut down. That's better than being actively aggressive, Rochelle. D. Murphy, uh, Kita just went to an animal ophthalmologist where they took her and, and did things to her head and eyes. They didn't, they didn't ask me any questions. And I had no access to the person who was actually seeing her. I just crossed my finger. See, you, now, now, D, you, 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 if time and circumstances don't permit and they just take your dog like that, they need to ask you those questions. They need to ask you before they take your dog, not during they take your dog. You're right. Once they take the dog, that's on them. That's on them. That's their liability. Have I done classes for veterinarians because they've been attacked by dogs in their, in, inside their office? Yes, I have. There was one incident in Michigan a few years ago where a shepherd grabbed the veterinary tech's arm and would not let go. It would not let go. And they knew the dog's propensity to bite. And they didn't take that extra precaution. So it's very important. If Now, th this is what I want you to, people to know. If your dog does have a history of biting, then make sure you do tell the veterinarian, even if they don't ask. Make sure you do tell them, all right? Very important, very important. You shouldn't have to feel that way, D. Uh, let's see here. Kelly Jenkins think, and Betsy, thank you for watching. Uh, how do you say it in control of that? How do you stay in control of that? Um, Tanya, you, you want to call ahead of time and let them know the dog's propensity, if, if that's the case. If they don't ask you, um, I don't want to say it's on them, but if your dog has a history, Make sure you disclose that or say, I don't know what he's going to do if they take him and, and you, you don't know. Listen, my dog is trained. If they take my dog and he's trained, I'm going to say, I'm going to say no. I'm going to kind of decline it because my dog, Milo, he is trained. If, he, if I'm not there, I, he's not only just going to bite him, he's going to do more than that. So I'm going to insist as a dog, I'm going to insist or go to some place that will, like Rochelle said, have the vet come out. So it's very important. Yes, that is why you helped us to manage them. Correct, Danielle. You're right. Right away, no aggression at all since your training. That, that, you're right. My goal, um, uh, Danielle, is to get them from aggression to submission. Some dogs don't know. Some dogs have no clue why they, they're aggressive. They just feel it and their brain tells them to until we teach them morals. Until we teach them morals. And that's what training does, teaches them morals. Rachel, thank you for watching. Say hi to Damon for me. Uh, my, vet, uh, my vet makes an exception for Rocco. Uh, mom must stay with him. Correct. And it's very important to know that. Your vet's a good vet for that. Uh, let's see, Shane. A professional should ask questions because surprise can cause harm. It also owns responsibility to let them know. Very good point, Shane. That's better well said than me. Uh, so again, let me, let me repeat what Shane wrote because it merits to be said again. And the reason why is I also put these on YouTube and the YouTube don't have the luxury of seeing my text. A professional should ask questions because surprises can cause harm. It's also the owner's responsibility to let them know too. So you, we have dual responsibility, especially when you have a dog with a propensity to bite. Very well said, Shane. Thank you for your input. Cindy, uh, Griffey gets aggressive on night walks, but that's protecting me, right? Um, she could be a little bit more hyper alert, Cindy, at night because of that. Um, but to actually give you the the, the, the perfect definition is I don't know, but I'm saying what, it could be that. It could be that. I, I just go on the other side of the sidewalk and cross the road. Anything else? Do I say no or leave it? I wouldn't say anything, Cindy, because you don't know. You don't know. Um, a lot of these dogs, their, their aggressive behavior is a psychological deterrent, and, and that's what you want. If you say no or leave it when she's growling, Cindy, now you're going to teach a dog not to growl and not to bark. Now you're gonna, your warning's gone. Your warning's gone. You don't want your warning to be gone, Cindy. So just manage it. Understand your dog loves you enough to protect itself and you. And you. 
Uh, Miranda, thank you for watching. Charlie, train your dog to be comfortable in a muzzle when taking it to the vet or groomer. That, that could be. Now, in some cases, uh, Charlie, that could make the dog worse. That could make the dog worse because now the, the dog, his main line of defense is gone. In a perfect world, it'd be nice if, if they did like Rochelle's vet. They stepped out or they made exceptions with a certain dogs to have you hold them and so on. I know there's a risk. But you know what? Worst case scenario, then your dog doesn't get treated until, until the pandemic is gone, unless it's a serious injury or serious issue, but like shots or something like that. They can wait because of that. You don't want the vet. You don't want somebody to get bit. Some serious harm. Emily, thank you for watching. Cindy, ah, thank you. Uh, Renee, let's see what Renee says. Uh, my pup, seven months, has never let me trim her toenails. Uh, Renee, I'm working on a show about, about trimming, to, uh, trimming nails. That seems to be a very important thing, and it could lead to aggression, especially if a groomer or a veterinarian pins the dog down with four or five, six people. You're just teaching this dog that fight like crazy and not like it becomes a trauma for the dog to get his nails clipped. So I'm going to go into it. It's going to take me a little while because i got to make video, so just bear with me with that. Um, Yesterday, the groomer, she tried to bite the groomer. Yes, puts him in a cone. Yes, it could put her in a, it could put her there, but sometimes you have to read the body language. You put her in a cone, and then you can cut the nails. You could be internalizing stress. Some dogs, the next time you try to put the cone on, you're in for a hell of a fight. Next time you try to put the muzzle on, you're in for a hell of a fight because dogs are forward thinkers. They're forward thinkers, meaning they know ahead of time, okay, the cone comes on, my nails are going to come, my nails are going to get clipped, so I'm going to fight beforehand. That's easy to think. Here comes a porcupine, I know what's going to happen, I'm going to stay away from it. No different than, oh, here comes a muzzle, I know what's going to happen next. This is why it's important to have, to read body language and know how dogs think. Very, very good. Uh, you're welcome, uh, uh, Renee, it will be awesome. Uh, Yasha, thank you for watching. We got some good feedback with you and your dogs. Awesome. So again, that's aggressive body language. Direct eye contact to become tunnel vision. Body stiff. Handle stress with aggression. Tail could be wagging because it's happy to bite you. You get a really confident dog, his tail, she, her tail is going to be wagging, just like you've seen on that video. Now, dominance aggression. Dominance aggression. Dominance aggression is something that we need to be aware of. Because this happens quite a bit. We need to know what that aggressive body language looks like. It skips the meeting ritual. An aggressive body language dominant dog will skip the meeting ritual and will go and will assert dominance right away with a bite. That's it. It skips so it sees another dog or person. So if you stick your hand out, it don't want to smell your hand. It just wants to nail you to assert its dominance. Even worse if you go hands-on with a dominant dog. Yesterday I had a dog in my one-on-one -on -one who the trainer before me was using dominant behaviors with pinning him down an alpha, and the dog was getting a lot worse. Of course it is. You're playing its game. It loves it. And it thinks you're a dog too. So skips the meeting ritual. Uses body pressure to gain control resorting to aggression if submission is not giving so if it's going to use its body and it's going to try to gain control over you and then if you if, if a dog doesn't submit or even you don't submit by backing away bam it bites you they wait they know they want to be the hunter not the prey think about that a dominant aggressive dog wants to be the hunter not the prey if pressured will bite to stop the pressure and maintain dominance. So you're going to see a dog here in a minute. I pressure it, and it does not like it. It, it does. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know if it's this one or not. Yeah, it will be this one. It, so any pressure, it will not like. It will go after you. So very important dominance. Very important dominance aggression. Let me see what I got here. Uh, Cindy, my awesome vet, tells me to bring... Griffy by just for a treat. Oh, so good, Cindy, to desensitize the dog from a bad appointment with another vet clipping his tails. Cindy, that is a, a very well, um, I want you to write your vet's name on, on your thread here for me, please.
That's a very good idea. Not many, uh, not many vets that I know do that. Uh, so for the people who, who are not going to read my thread, let me read what Cindy says. Uh, my awesome vet tells me to bring Griffey by just, just buy for a treat to desensitize from a bad appointment with another vet clipping its nails. That's awesome. That really is. Um, and we, we should do that more often. But again, when you're looking at a vet, time and circumstances may not allow them to do that. It's not easy. It's not easy because they're, they're already busy and then they're, they're having this extra dog in there, you know, coming in. It's not easy, but try to find a day th for that to happen. That's very good. I wish more vets would dedicate a day for that just to happen. Um, good, good. Remember, it's about people. It's not about dogs. It's about people. It's not about dogs. Please understand that. People pay you, not dogs. Love people. It's okay to love dogs, but priorities should be people because of that. Even with trainers, very, very important. So we talked about too, don't forget, aggressive body language protects themselves, protects you, protects their property. Think about that. And we do the same thing, except we have a moral compass. These dogs don't. These dogs need to be managed correctly so they don't, so they don't go overboard. These dogs need to be managed correctly so you can call them back and make them come sit down, stay and heal. They're in the face of aggression even. Even if the dog is protective, he's no good to you if you don't have control. What good is he if, if you can't answer the door with him? What good is he if you can't answer the door with him, whether it be a small dog or a big dog? What good is he if you can't answer? You see that little dog bites my leg. He got so excited and was so aggressive, he nailed my leg. Now, again, think about managing and how these dogs develop all this adrenaline. Looking out the window. Looking out the window does that, people. I, this year, this year, I learned just by body language which dogs that happens to. I had a seven-month shepherd, seven-month shepherd in a couple days ago extremely aggressive, but then he wasn't. What happened is that he would see a dog through the window and just go crazy. See a dog. It was a conditioned response that I was seeing. He wasn't naturally that aggressive. It was just a conditioned response. It was really, really odd, but it was very dramatic. So I know they left him out a lot. Look out the window a lot. So again, that's what happens with small dogs. Fear aggression. Fear, aggression, body language. Eyes bulging out, body compacted. Fear, aggression. Let's see some of that. Fear, aggression. You don't want to get close to a fear, aggressive dog. You do not want to get close to a fear aggressive dog. So that just goes to show you how intense this dog was. You, if you go back and watch the replay, that dog's eyes never blinked. It, they never blinked. He had direct eye contact. They became tunnel vision. And his body was compacted. You notice his tail was straight down. It wasn't tucked in. It was straight down. It was in a neutral position. But when you look at his eyes, he never blinked the whole time. Came right after me, explosive. PTSD, fear. Um, it's hard to say if it was genetic. It's hard to say if it was training. It's hard to say it was environment. The whole objective to that dog was determine whether whether he should, he's a liability or not. And of course he is. Of course he is. He, had, he was. I think he bit two or three people before he came to me, and he bit another person that day before he came to me. So very, very, very important. Don Dennis, thank you for watching. Uh, Chris Schultz, Ziggy does that. All the time at the door. Uh, Chris, we need to work on off leash. I hope you're not th saying that he bites. Yes, he gets excited. I just don't want him to bite out of excitement. The reason they bite out of excitement sometimes is because when they're excited, Chris, their neck and shoulders get full of blood and they have to bite to relieve that tension off their neck and shoulders. So biting is actually a way to relieve stress. Almost similar to somebody with an anger problem who punches a hole in the wall. Because what happens, they get so mad, 
and then they punch a hole in the wall and then it relaxes them. So, and this is why it's important to understand that at the door, they need to sit, they need to stay, they need to down. So you put the collar on them and you teach them what's expected of them at the door, Chris. You teach them. If he's loose, he trains himself. If he's loose, he trains himself. All right, very, very important. Uh, that's how Murdoch is when people come over, uh, re receive his 85 pounds. Well, some of that's a psychological deterrent, Rochelle, but you got to have control over him. You got to do your off leash at that door. That's, that's very important. That's a liability. There's people that can come on your property or even may knock at the door without your permission. So very important. Darcy, have you had any experience with PTSD aggression? That, that dog that there that you just saw, uh, Darcy, uh, did have PTSD. Uh, what happens is some of these dogs, um, I had a dog yesterday. I do have it on video, but I got to wait to find out what they're going to do with the dog to determine whether I should play it or not. Um, it was a 150-pound dog. This dog was naturally, uh, naturally submissive and meek, but he was so sensitive, submissive, and meek that anything bothered him. Any noise bothered him. Well, he got a year and a half old, and he developed PTSD because of all that. So he was terrified of everything. So how does a dog with PTSD, how to relieve his stress? Man, if you don't decompress him physically or mentally, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. So you, but, but he may not be a good family dog if he's, if he's that way because he's hypersensitive, hyper to touch, hypersensitive to touch. So if a kid touches him when he's stressed, he could bite out of PTSD. So very important to understand that PTSD could be a factor in some of these dogs. Uh, let's see here. It's very, very different aggression than zero signs that can also just flu. Well, it, it, it can be, but usually PTSD is, is, it happens in time. So you could get a dog that's companion temperament and be abused with a shock collar and develop PTSD. So it could, it could accumulate. You could get a dog who's fearful and then the, the owner abuses it and then it gets PTSD. You can get a dog who's strong-willed, that's abused, constantly never played with, and never decompressed, that could get PTSD. So what it does, it accumulates, Darcy. It doesn't just happen overnight. It accumulates. No different than a person, doesn't it? <laughs> no different than a person. Uh, let's see here. Yasha, uh, let me get my glasses on here real quick here. Uh, film on the window does wonders. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's how you stop the management. Exactly right. Uh, they still bark if they hear something. Yes, but it's a lot less. So again, if he continues to bark, that means he's hypersensitive. He's learned that behavior. He's got forward thinking, Yasha, and that's the case. He hears a knock, and he's going to think ahead of time that someone's going to be there. This is why it's important to massage him uh, physically and play with him mentally till you got the mental and physical part to relax him. Very, very, very important. And he's still a psychological deterrent. Uh, D reminds me of those emotional support dogs. Yes, you're right. Shell shocked with a tail in the position. They're so stressed out. I've seen I've seen some very good service dogs, uh, D, who become who become very good service dogs, and the owners don't mentally and physically decompress them. Who become PTSD? Who become well? You'd say shell shocked. Same thing. You're right. They do do that. It is important. This is why I made a show on how to physically decompress and how to mentally decompress a dog. He could be perfectly well trained and develop PTSD. Very, very important. Uh, Christina Foster, thank you for watching. If your family's watching, uh, Kristen, hello, Foster family. Thank you. Uh, Darcy, my canine uh, was attacked and ripped apart. Yes, I remember that. He can develop PTSD because of that. There's a way to handle that. Exposure. Your next step is exposure. Your next step is confidence. Your next step is decompressing and mentally and physically. There's a little bit of homework, but you can do it. It can be done. Uh, Sherry, I swapped out the film with spray snow for Christmas. There you go. Uh, that way nobody can see you or the dog can't see anybody neither, uh, Sherry. I hope that's the reason. <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, mom and I are working on, on Ziggy at the door. Yes, uh, you know what, uh, Chris, remember, if the dog is loose, he trains himself. Give a dog the, the um, options on what to do. Give the dog, options a bad word, give the dog a plan on what to do. When I hear the door, my job is to sit and not become aggressive. 
My, dog, my, my job is to sit and remain calm. My job is to lay down while the owner steps on the lead so I can't get up so I can remain calm. Those are some good tips. Some dogs you can't save. Um, I understand that, Darcy. And what, what's, what's difficult, it's, it's hard to measure that too. I never got to see him that way, so I, I don't know if I could have helped you or not. Uh, Sherry, yeah, back to you, Sherry. Uh, he won. Thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Uh, if you have, you have any questions, we got time here. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you another two more videos so you kind of get an idea. A loyal dog can be aggressive. They only love the people that they're bonded with. And remember, a loyal dog has two temperaments. He loves, and he, he, when, he's, when his owner's there, he's happy. He loves everybody. The owner's not there. Watch out. Watch out. Okay, I'm going to show you a video. Let me give you a little history on this, on this video that you're going to see. The owners um, had the dog. They got married, so they went on their honeymoon. They let somebody watch the dog while they were on their honeymoon. When that person came to let the dog out, the dog was not going to let anybody let him out. He didn't, didn't want anybody to come near him. I think it was two days before they called me. It, he, we just wouldn't let anybody come. So they called me. I had to go there to go get the dog out to go to the bathroom. And then I had to take him with me uh, for emergency reasons because there, there's no way I could drive back and forth and leave him in the house. So I get to the house and the dog won't let anybody come near him. But what's, what was odd is that they said the dog loved everybody when the, when the master was there. Of course he is. He's a loyal dog. So I knew right away he was a loyal dog, but that also put me in danger. So let me show you the video on what I had to do. Every time I pressured this dog, this dog went after me. So I had to be very careful. I, I ended up putting the uh, slip lead on in the house, and I could not film in the house for safety reasons. I used my hat, so he bite the hat and not me, so he felt good about it. So he felt good about biting. It relaxed him. It's a long video. I just want to show you a quick. So when the owner came, I had this dog for 10 days. When the owner came to pick up the dog, the dog was perfectly fine. But the whole time, I had a very hard time getting him in and out until the owner came. Uh, the dog didn't want to play, didn't want to do anything. Uh, once the owner came, perfectly fine. So just to give you an idea on loyal temperament, a lot of the times you see dogs and the, uh, and the trainer may take the dog and the dog might get aggressive towards the trainer. And then they say, oh, the dog's aggressive. No, he's loyal. He's loyal. That's why he's like that. This is why it's important. I know a trainer who was bitten very serious in another state because his job was to take dogs from the owner and train them in front of the owner, but he didn't identify that this dog was loyal, and he got bit very serious. He tried to sue the owner, and I'm like, no, you can't. Well, you can. You can do what you want, but what questions did you ask? Why didn't you identify that he was a loyal dog? I, know, I didn't know what that meant, Hector. You do now. Okay, you do now. So I ended up doing a, a seminar for that state and the trainers in that area after that dog bite. Uh, it's... it's what, what, what I don't like is I don't like going to a place after someone's being bitten, serious, and do a talk. I want to go there before someone gets injured, not after. That's my job is to make sure it doesn't happen. And a lot of the times our ego tells us it'll never happen to me. Well, then fine. If you want to wait until it happens to you and then do something about it, that's on you. I want to do it before. I want to do it before. So that was a loyal dog. He loved everybody when the owner was there, but not anybody when he wasn't there. Very, very important. Uh, let me go back here. Uh, Carrie, it's play with Darla, play, plays with Scout. It is play. Yes. Oh, Carrie, I remember you, Carrie. Uh, yes. I'm glad things are working out with you. Vicky, difference between reactive and aggressive. Well, reactive, uh, uh, Vicky, uh, reactive is usually when they react on leash. That's how, that's what um, it's labeled throughout the country. Uh, reactive on a leash, leash reactive. Aggressive, I, I, like, I like to say it's all aggression. 
somebody just labeled it reactive and it just stuck and they're just doing that. I'm going to talk about that next week, how to get a dog uh, deactivated on a leash. Uh, because a lot of the times they're using treats. And I'm going to tell you, I got video and I, I want to see theirs. I want to see theirs. And, and, quite, and don't really rely on reality shows. Come on, people. We should know that by now. Uh, anyways, so difference between reactive and aggressive. It's basically the same thing, to be honest with you, Vicky, in short. It really is. Uh, let me see. Uh, Sanha, hi, Hector. How about aggressive behavior towards other dogs? Ah, so with aggressive dogs, with other dogs, our Labrador puppy is not, is not friendly with my sister's golden. If it's a puppy, it may be in distress. It may not want another dog to come near it. It may be afraid of bigger dogs. Maybe the, the other dog's a bully and the puppy is overwhelmed with it. So again, when I go back to my, um, uh, Sanja, go back to my how to, raise, how to raise a perfect puppy. Go back and how to train uh, uh, how to train a puppy that way you'll know because um, if you keep allowing this puppy to be exposed to a big dog like that that makes him afraid you're in for it when he gets older you're in for it so it's very important right now as a puppy to mold him and expose him more than you are socialize him or find a dog that your dog doesn't feel threatened by so that doesn't happen so that doesn't happen uh, she will get low to the ground and stalk him like a lion yeah but her breed is not her breed, Carrie, is not predisposed to, to be aggressive. Her breed is not that. So it's very important. It's probably just play. So continue to get her to play with the ball, to get her to uh, play tug of war with her. But remember, we're going to talk about how to get respect next week with some of these dogs. A lot of people think you go hands on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how to get respect next week. I'm going to tell you how, how you lose respect next week, all right, with a dog. Uh, interesting. Yes, please. Yeah, good. Uh, Darcy, Craig, Craig always works on training issues before something bad happens. Yes, not, the, not that dog is a puppy too. Well, it just may be, if it's overwhelming, uh, Sanja, um, then just kind of reserve it. Maybe it's not ready for it. Worst comes to worst, Sanja, send me a 10 to, a, a 10 to 30 second video on my Facebook or, on my, um, or, on, or text it to me. All right, 517-712-5012 is my number. It's public, so I, I don't mind saying this. Text it to me or, uh, or uh, Facebook it so I, so I can pretty much ask, help you even more than what you're, than what you're describing. And you want, I want to help you now when it's a puppy versus later, versus later. Uh, I couldn't, okay, looking forward to next week yes tanya me too refresh your day i had the days mixed up but you got it now you got it now uh let me see if i make sure i got exposed yeah i went i went through everything you guys so aggressive body language uh let me go back really quick direct eye contact that becomes tunnel vision body stiff tail could be wagging happy to bite you handle stress with aggression Dominance, dominance body language, skips the meeting ritual, will bite to assert dominance, uses body pressure to gain control, resorting to aggression if submissive, submission is not given. They want to be the hunter, not the prey. That's their mentality. If pressured, will bite to stop the pressure and maintain dominance. Very, very, very important for the ones who watch my show and can't look. Uh, at, at me. They can hear me, but they can't look because they're driving or doing something else. So very, very important. Aggressive body language. Why should you know it? Liability, safety, liability, and safety. We talked about th what those issues evolve in. Safety. We need to know what an aggressive dog looks like if we're a trainer. We need to know what an aggressive looks like if our dogs resort to aggression. Like Darcy said about PTSD, we need to identify the dog's stress. We need to know if the dog's mouth is closed all the time and then actually in time builds and builds and builds and gets PTSD. We need, we need to know that. We need to know how to mentally, we need to know how to physically decompress a dog. That is mandatory so the dogs don't develop PTSD. They don't become unpredictable. We need to learn body language so we know. Normal body language, mouth open and closing, looks like he's smiling. 
Okay, potentially threatening, mouth, closed, mouth tense when closed, doesn't want to look, always tight. We need to know those so we don't set our dogs up to fail. And dogs do come. My dog, who is predisposed to be aggressive, Malo, if he's stressed, I massage him. I play with him a little bit more. I'm looking for normal body language every day. Every day. A dog wants to protect himself, his owner, his property. Remember that. It's no different than us. No different than us. Very important. Uh, next week episode on my calendar. Thank you, Cindy. Gratitude. Thank you for doing these. You're welcome, Cindy. Remember, the pandemic is really making things difficult, and I like to give my information free. Um, I'm going to be doing, I have a list of probably uh, right now seven shows ahead of time that I could do, um, which uh, listening to, um, to the uh, president-elect Biden saying we got 100 days after uh, he gets uh, after he gets uh, sworn in, uh, well, I'm going to assume that it's going to be another three more months of of being closed. Uh, that's just my assumption. So I want to have shows in advance to get people going, and then I want to, I want them to have replays. I can't tell you how many times I've sent people to my how to decompress a dog physically and mentally. I can't tell you how many times they sent me a text back. Thank you. That's all I needed. Good. Then just watch that. That's good. All right. Uh, so very important. Yes. Yes. You're welcome, Darcy. You're welcome. You had a good question there. Uh, CJ White, thank you for watching. Uh, Joanne, thank you for watching. Uh, 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 Pickner, thank you for watching it. All right. Let's see here. We got 10 minutes. Uh, again, let's go over the, remember, the Pavlov system, the treat method didn't talk about. It didn't talk about the breed or temperament of dog. It just went into the response. I wanna, I'm going to show you a quote that uh, an expert witness wrote about aggression. It's going to blow you away, and now that you know how dogs think, you're going to be, oh, my God, this dog, these dogs are going to be set up to fail. The easily, easily they're going to be set up to fail. And I don't want you guys to get into that. I don't want you to use treats and think it's going gonna, it's gonna to make this dog deactivate because, because he gets a treat. Hell, how do you know? He could, you could be rewarding the behavior because you gave him a treat. If you're not looking at body language, if praise alone can do that, just imagine what a treat can do. Just imagine what a treat can do. And I'm going to show you before and after. And pay attention. Deactivating a dog shouldn't take 8, 12 weeks. Come on now. It shouldn't take that long. I do it in a session. In a session, I should do it. Now, then it's your job to manage it. So it doesn't accumulate that extra stress. It's your job to decompress them mentally and physically and maintain your off-leash control so you don't set them up to fail. The aggression's still there. You're not going to take the aggression away. You're just going to manage it and control it. If you want to take the aggression away, then get a dog who's not predisposed to be aggressive. It's that simple. And if you have a dog who's predisposed to be aggressive and, and who's not predisposed to be aggressive and he's aggressive, then we have to look at other, other avenues on why he's aggressive. Very, very important. Tori, uh, delivering the mail. Yes, you can still listen to me, but you can't watch me, Tori. That's very good, very good point. I'm still going to be talking. Uh, Pete Peters, thank you for watching. Hey, Deb Otter. Deb Otter, thank you for watching. You went to Corgi's. You had my last dog, Taco, that I trained. You took excellent care of him. I love watching the, I love looking at the videos and the pictures that you posted. But I see you went to another shepherd, a little Corgi shepherd. Just as tough, though. Just as tough. A little less maintenance, too, on them. A uh, little less maintenance on them, too, Deb. Uh, anyways, so... We're gonna, next week is going to be about deactivating an aggressive dog. And let me tell you what I'm going to do the following week. I'll just tell you now. Lori, Randy, and I, Lori and Randy are both certified first aid and CPR and other, um, and other uh, things about dogs first aid. They are excellent at what they do. We're going to make a video on how to save your dog's life in the event something happens it just in the beginning, though, remember, right after something happens, your main goal is to take them right to the emergency vet, right to the vet. I'm going to give you some information on what to do, and they're going to give you some just basic information on how to save your dog's life. There's a lot of information out there that, that is really going to set your dog up to fail, and we want to do the best we can to give you that right information or the best information that we know of to help you. That's going to be after my deactivating an aggressive dog. 
So next week, deactive and aggressive dog. The following week, first aid to save a dog's life. huh? And then the following is separation anxiety. And then we got a lot of other stuff. I might even change it. Who knows? But for sure, the next two weeks are going to be deactivating an aggressive dog and first aid, saving a dog's life, saving a dog's life. Oh, uh, Patty. Hi, Hector. Can't wait for the video on emergency care. Yes. Yes, Patty. I tell you, um, I had to use some of that. And, and as a trainer, we have to know that. As veterinarians, of course you know that. As groomers, you better know. As doggy daycare, you better know. So tune in. Tune in, vet, uh, veterinarians who, uh, or anybody who works with, in the veterinarian office. Tune in, doggy daycare centers. Tune in, trainers. Tune in because you need to know this stuff. Now, you need to know the basic, but you're going to need to get certified. You're going to need to get certified, but you need to know the basics. I'm going to introduce you to two people that are going to help you with that. So it's very important to know that. Uh, Patty, I love you too. I'm excited for two weeks. Oh, Patty, you always make me smile. Making someone smile is worth a million dollars, Patty. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kristen, this is awesome. Looking forward to it. Me too, Kristen. I, I get really motivated. Uh, Gemma, thank you for watching. I get really motivated because I love the feedback that I get after my shows. And remember, the Internet makes the world very small, and I get people from all over the world now for watching my replays, all over, trainers from all over the world. Um, I, I've had to recently had to switch over my YouTube. When I will go to YouTube, change the, uh, the where they can... Um, they can click a, uh, click a button and they can, it can say it in a different language. So I got a lot of people from Mexico, you know, watching my video. It's awesome. I wish I could do it in Spanish, but hey, I, I can't. I'm not, I can speak it really well, but not, not, uh, not as well as I do English. So anyways, it, it, it makes the world very small. Becca, you missed my show, Becca. You got to go back and watch it. Becca has got some natural dog training abilities. And look at you guys. If you get somebody like Becca, who's young and has got very good dog knowledge abilities, and her passion is dog training, look at, keep training, Becca, because by the time you retire, you're going to be awesome. I mean, you're going to be really good. This could be a good retirement job for you as far as dog training. And you do got some good natural abilities. And some of you people that are out there do that. You don't have to be great at it initially. Just tab into it a little bit every year, every year, until you become really good at it. Go to different trainers. Go to different methods. Go to different theories and, and, and test them and see what works best for you to develop your own style. Uh, Beth, uh, will, you, will you address, let's see here. Will you address dog reactivity? Yes, that's next week, Beth. But if you want me to, to qualify something, Beth, send me a message to make sure I do cover it. Since you're watching my show and you're going to be watching, make, I, I want to make sure that I, that I do cover it. Uh, Deb Utter, miss my Jim and Shepherd's thought. Yeah, I know you do. I get it. I'm going to Dutch Shepherd's. I start cheating on Jim and Shepherd's. I can't, I can't leave Dutch. Uh, I can't wait for separation anxiety. Uh, yes, well, again, um, Kelly, I'm also going to be doing that because... After the pandemic, everybody's going to be going back to work, and some of these dogs are not used to being left alone for that long. I want to have a show so when, they, when people start doing that, they can go back and watch it. Then go back and watch it. Very important. Shows are awesome. Thank you, Vicki. I appreciate that. Uh, Becca, yes, I marked my calendar for next week, though. Very good, Becca, and thank you. You're welcome. Uh, this is awesome. When Murdoch was hit by a car, knowing what to do to save him. Oh, very good, Rochelle. One of the first things you want to do to save his life is get him off leash obedient. And we did. And we did. We got him off leash obedient. And that's very important because you need that control. That off leash obedience is a safety. Because if you don't teach it, just like in your case, a dog will teach him and a, a car. But look at he probably still didn't know a car did it. He probably still would have ran out in front of another car. So very important to teach the off leash come command. As trainers, our dogs are a reflection of us. It is important when you see a trainer, look at his dog. Is he off leash trained? Is his mouth open? Is he having fun doing training? Is he, if he's a protection dog, is he looking forward, not at the handler? Why don't I want him looking at the handler? Because my threat's in front of me, not up. I want him to look in front. So look at all these things to, to, to see if, if this trainer fits your, your method of training. Look at the videos that he's got online. Should he have videos? Of course they should have videos. 
We're, we're in the era that we can have, we can make a quick video. I make a video unedited right for the owner before they leave my facility so they have documentation and they have a resource to go back to. In that video, I tell them everything they need to do. We live in a fast-paced society. Sometimes we can listen to it when we're driving. Sometimes you want our husbands or our wives that can't show up or our kids to listen to what we did. So it's very important to have that. So today, uh, let's see here. That's a great point, Hector. Many people will be returning. Yes, yes. They wanted me to do it before, and then we got a second surge. So I'm not anticipating this going away real soon, uh, Lori. So I'm going to be, it's going to be, I, there's a lot about uh, separation anxiety, but I, I break it up. I break it up. I say emo uh, separation anxiety and emotional dependency. I break it up. So I break it up because there is a difference, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ascertain the difference for you. Uh, uh, Jeannie Stevens, thank you for watching. Megan, Megan, I think I got to get back with you yet. Our schedules kept getting back and forth, but we will, Megan. We'll get it, Megan. So again, next week, deactivating an aggressive dog. If, if you have a question and you want to make sure that I'm going to cover it next week, please send me a message. I may not respond or it may not be a, it may not, it may just give me a statement. Make sure you cover this, Hector. Make sure, I want to make sure you cover this. Put that on there so I make sure I do cover it. All right, very important. That's deactivating an aggressive dog next week. I'm going to talk about the pressure down, something that's very important, and then I'm going to qualify it. I'm going to qualify it. I mean, I'm not going to use treats. You're going to see the pressure down. Very important. You're going to see dogs who are very aggressive and then very submissive. You're going to know what submissive body language looks like, all right? You're going to look like submissive body language looks like. I didn't want to make a whole show of submissive body language because it's a quick, quick thing. Aggressive is a little more complex, a little more things to it. So understand that. Very, very important. All right. It is 1 o'clock. It's an hour show. I could go on for a long time, trust me. Some of my talks are, are four, six hours long. But I have two one-on-ones today. And I have to be ready for them. But I want to thank everybody for being here. I want you to have a good, safe week. Please have a safe week. Um, please be safe. Please be healthy. Stay healthy. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here. And I love you guys for showing up and watching me. I love you guys for giving me the feedback. I love you for being dedicated and loyal to me to keep coming back. I love you for the constructive and destructive comments that you give me. I've gotten some good, good feedback. Some of it's not nice, but you know what? Some of it's good, even if it's not nice. I like it. doesn't bother me. All right. See you next week at noon, next Wednesday. Um, if it changes, I'll post it on my Facebook what day it is because I think I, have a, I, I might have a talk I have to do next week. I'm just not sure if it's canceled or not, but I will post it on there. Thank you, everybody. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys for being here, okay? Thank you so much.